societies. And uh, uh, I also served uh, uh, many uh, editorial boards of uh, many outstanding journals. Uh, let's welcome Dr. Pong, and his topic will be Thrill Therapy for Spinal Injury, the Surgical Perspectives. Um, I have to thank the organizer for having me here. Really, to be educated, I, I really feel educated the last couple of days. Especially, I remember our recent paper on uh, um, cell therapy. Is always the, the question always come to uh, ask us um, the uh, tumor genesis of stem cells, and I can't really answer that question satisfactorily. But uh, I think after today listening to both talks of today, I, I'm more equipped to answer that question. Um, today I, I am going to talk about the, the, um, the surgical perspective on cell therapy uh, for um, uh, chronic spinal cord injury. But basically, uh, if we look at the clinicaltrial.gov, uh, this study that um, uh, Professor Wai Xiang mentioned this morning, um, looking at the safety and feasibility of umbilical cord blood cell transplant into a uh, uh, 20 uh, 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 chronic spinal cord injury. Um, and um, we are very um, uh, privileged that uh, both medical schools in Hong Kong are doing uh, this study uh, with the um, uh, sponsorship and um, guidance of uh, the China Spinal Cord Injury Network. And um, the um, study design is such that we will be looking at 20 uh, chronic spinal cord injury patients, uh, which is defined as um, spinal cord injury patients more than one year uh, after injury. And the cells that have been chosen were the umbilical cord the blood mononuclear cells. Uh, the preparation will be 100,000 cells per Microliter, and it's uh, those escalating or those finding study where four microliter, eight and sixteen microliters were being given to three groups of uh, four patients, and um, if the um, complications um, did not occur uh, at the maximum uh, uh, volume, uh, we will be using the sixteen microliters. Uh, times four. This is a four uh, quadrants uh, injection. And if complication occurred at the 16 microliter, then we will drop back to be using the eight microliters. Um, and then in the fourth and the fifth group, we will be testing uh, the addition of uh, metaprednisolone. And then in the, on the fifth group, the steroid plus lithium for six weeks. And the outcome assessment on Day three, we'll be looking mainly at um, complications of the injections or the medications, and followed by um, uh, within the one year period up to 48 weeks, uh, the sequential assessment after the transplant. Now, before we get carried away, we always, uh, scientists and, and, and clinicians together, we, we sometimes forgotten what we are looking for. The, uh, we have to ask ourselves or to remind ourselves what has been damaged. Is it the, the neurons or the uh, axons or the, support, sub, or the supporting cells? Because it's a one level, uh, one segment or two segment injury and therefore um, the quadriplegia or the paraplegia I think is largely because of the, the long track or the axonal injury and the function that has been lost or that we hope to be regained after therapy will be um, obviously the motor uh, function recovery but motor function recovery without the sensory recovery is also uh, useless without a joint sense, without position sense we won't be able to function and the over uh, sensitized um, uh, sensory fiber we we'll also be uh, potentiating the painful spasticity that uh, 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 some of our patients uh, suffered, and and also finally the uh, sphincter dysfunction. 
So the, these are the diagrams that we always uh, come to remind ourselves. So the injection um, mainly into the lesion um, will be perhaps destroying quite a lot of the dorsal column and therefore the injection site is uh, quite important uh, to be uh, specified, uh, which we will go into some detail later. Now, the background of this study, we have gone through some of it, uh, is a dose escalating or dose finding study for the first three groups of four patients and followed by the fourth group, a bolus of uh, methaprenicillin, uh, which is supported by uh, uh, at least one uh, experimental study. And, um, and the addition of the lithium in the final group uh, is also uh, supported by this uh, uh, study from Hong Kong University, um, suggesting that the lithium enhances the proliferation of the cells and also neuronal differentiation after the, tra the cell transplant. Now, one of the questions will be why we want to choose the umbilical cord blood, the mononuclear cells. Um, it is deemed to be safe because a large um, body of experience has been already built up since 1993 from the hematology uh, practice. And some of the smaller or rarer um, diseases such as muscular dystrophy uh, in mice was, uh, it was proven to be uh, efficacious. And um, intravenous injection of these cells uh, in um, mice, and also, uh, and also um, the spinal injury model uh, has also been proven to be effective uh, in small animals. The intrinsic injection into the spinal cord uh, using these cells, the CD34 positive cells, in rodent and canine uh, spinal cord injury model. Uh, were found to be uh, uh, of uh, efficacy and, um, and also finally the uh, cell uh, plus the uh, brain derived um, neurotrophic factor um, was also found to be uh, uh, good uh, or beneficial in this Korean study um, also in animals. Now what about HLA typing, is it necessary? Now, we've had some discussion over the last couple of days on that. Some of us think that because the sinograph and allograph um, were basically mostly rejected uh, by four weeks, and therefore some would regard the, that even the MSC, the missing chemical stem cell, do not have the privilege um, to stay, and therefore we have chosen to do HLA typing uh, using the high resolution method and we would accept four out of six uh, matching. Now this is the diagram that Weiss has uh, shown us this morning, a uh, sterile mathematical uh, formula plus a graph. So, so it's uh, showing that the 10 microliter and the 35 microliter uh, increases the uh, diameter of this volume of sphere uh, of injection from two uh, from two to three millimeter in diameter to over four millimeters. And um, if we put this number or size of the sphere into a proportional spinal cord uh, cross section, and it will become quite obvious that uh, a, an injection of one millimeter or ten millimeter into the dorsal column uh, may be okay, but to have this big sphere uh, when we inject 35 or 40 microliters into this area uh, may destroy some of our functions uh, before the cells are proven to be efficacious. And this again come from uh, Wise and uh, just it, uh, telling us um, when we inject, this is uh, the Bevo uh, Dan. I uh, know this is uh, Bevo uh, Dan. Yeah, Bevo Dan would uh, give the cells uh, two injections right uh, bilaterally. Would uh, have the cells here, um, allowing part of the dorsal column and part of the lateral column to be. 
um, 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 delivered with uh, the cells. Whereas if we do a baffle up, then it's, it's mainly staying in the uh, dorsal column or in the center of the cord. So our recommendation would be that if we use uh, the diagram here that uh, if we inject at a 45 degree in the uh, dorsal root entry zone, then at three millimeters, then we will be given the cells to occupy part of the dorsal column and uh, largely the, the, the uh, cortical spinal tract as well as the, uh, uh, motor, uh, the motor cells, the, the, the anterior horn cells. And that, that is the theory why the, the, the four quadrant um, uh, bilateral uh, injections may be a better way to uh, do the study. Now this is a diagram I borrowed from some of our um, intramedullary tumor resection um, where we are concentrating on one side and, um, and these, are the dos the, uh, these are the dorsal nerve roots and um, from our um, standard experience we do a midline myelotomy to remove the tumor inside and from those experience we know that the, this would basically destroy the dorsal column and therefore the more recent uh, um, recommendation for people doing this type of work is that uh, we would open uh, the uh, uh, spinal cord uh, close to the dorsal root entry zone to reduce this type of injury. So we bore the same concept by injecting into this region bilaterally and uh, above and below the lesion. And uh, we would prefer uh, to be minimally invasive by not opening the entire uh, length of the spinal cord, but uh, doing it uh, a transverse dural incision at this level and also at that level, and uh, inject where we can see the, uh, the uh, dorsal root entry zone. So um, now th these are the um, um, pictures that I borrowed from the literature, uh, spinal cord injury in cats, uh, the DTI, and uh, so we're hoping to be able to do the same for, um, for our human patients that above the lesion and below the lesion, and we would like to use DTI guidance to um, tell us uh, where to inject. We're hoping to be injecting here and there. Um, just a couple of words on previous human experience of umbilical cord uh, mononuclear cells uh, on human spinal cord injury and um, quite a lot of, uh, talking about hundreds of patients has been done or cells provided by, uh, by Baker, a, a, a biotech company uh, uh, now in Shenzhen. And this paper come from Korea is a case report describing how it was done, uh, injecting cells into the, into the lesion and how uh, functions were uh, regained. And again, these two are um, uh, um, the, the internal um, document on the web uh, uh, telling us that how many cases were done, but uh, assessments were not uh, um, were not uh, properly um, uh, published. And um, l last night I looked at the clinicaltrial.gov. So these are the current the current clinical trials being uh, done um, uh, over the world. And um, there were one, two, three, four, f five printouts, of which the last one was uh, on BIF. Actually, it was a uh, I'm not sure how many of you are involved in this last study, but, but it was not a, an interventional study, it was an observational study, so, so that may be or should be excluded. So basically out of the five, one, two, three, the four studies, um, we hope that our study can be finished within, within this year. And uh, the first study was the macrophage uh, study from Israel, and for some reason it was, um, it was uh, suspended, I don't know, 
by himself, but because of fin financial problem. Because I, yeah, we were invited to send our patients there, and, and with their support, so they've stopped that now. And um, the Japanese study uh, was an acute study, quite different from ours. And then there was an, an, another um, a chronic plus acute uh, spinal cord injury study from Egypt. So, so this is uh, what is happening um, um, the rest of the world. Now, come back to um, the two patients that we have screened over the last uh, two or three weeks. Uh, this is one of our patients, again, young man, and uh, following a road traffic, traffic accident, and it was a C7 quadriplegia, and it was an Asia A. And you can see that the anatomically, the um, long track disruption is at C6, C7, and um, he does not need any uh, metal um, uh, reconstruction of internal fixation. And you can see that the, the DTI was beautifully done, and uh, we can relate um, the viable axons with the vertebral body, uh, which we can um, either use um, the, uh, the uh, navigation and surgery or just sim simple uh, C arm x ray screening. So this one should be straightforward. But the next one wasn't that happy because. Uh, this young man um, with a uh, uh, thoracic um, uh, injury with, with uh, Asia A, a, a paraplegia, there was a 360 degree uh, metallic um, uh, fixation. And you can see that uh, we don't really see, we, we see spinal cord above and spinal cord below, and we really don't see anything. So it would be difficult to uh, use the DTI guidance in injecting. The other way to get over this may be that on the day of, if the patient agreed that uh, we can, uh, and, and obviously we need to do CT to make sure that it's all fused, and we can take it out and do an MRI on the day, and then allow him to come back. Um, obviously, um, Operating room with intraoperative MRI would be easier, and um, and and and, and um, by this way we may be able to recruit this patient. And to conclude, um, the features of this surgical trial is that um, we have standardised the cells, we have standardised the uh, HLA typing, and we have standardised also the quantity and the quality as defined by these cells, and. We will be using the um, minimum invasive microsurgery, and the injection volume and size were defined at the dorsal entry zone. And it's also MI uh, DTI guided for the viable axons. And we hope that um, this will be the beginning of a phase three, or, or the, 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 to set the background for a phase three trial. And um, these are uh, the people who uh, have been working for, for this project so far. And um, I don't have the, uh, the logo for, for the records and the STEM site, but the sales are provided by STEM site. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Pong.